since January 4th of this year, the SP 500 has dropped 25%. This has left many investors asking the question, should I sell out of all my stocks and just go to cash? Or should I stick with the stocks I already have and just let my cash pile up on the sidelines? Or should I actually buy more stock while the market's down with a very real possibility that it might continue to decline? In this video, I'm going to help you answer those questions. As an investor of over 24 years in real estate and stocks, I've been through multiple bear markets. Depending on how you look at them, they can either be very painful times or tremendous opportunities. As you see here, bear markets are just a natural part of the investing cycle. The question is, will you take advantage of them or will you miss a potential opportunity or even worse, will you let them destroy you financially? I'm going to lay out some facts and give you my opinion on these questions so you can make a well-informed decision about your financial future. Here you see a list of all the bear markets we've been in since 1929. A bear market is generally defined as a decline of 20% or more from the market's recent highs. They're often associated with recessions, but a recession isn't a requirement for a market to be considered in a bear market. According to the Hartford Funds, the average bear market in the S&P 500 lasts about 9.6 months. In all, there have been 27 bear markets in the S&P 500 since 1928. And 12 of those 27 bear markets actually occurred between 1928 and 1945. On average, during a bear market, the S&P 500 has lost 36%. One of the most recent bear markets happened in 2008, and it lasted 408 days. During that time, the S&P 500 dropped almost 52%. The most recent bear market cycle was also the shortest in history at only 33 days. But during that time, the S&P 500 experienced a dramatic 34% drop. On average, bear markets happen every 3.6 years. So the fact that we're in a bear market right now, since the last one happened two and a half years ago, well, it shouldn't really be too surprising to us. Although right now, all you're hearing about is recessions and bear markets, bear markets actually only a small piece of the whole investment horizon. From 1928 through 2020, bear markets only made up 22% of the whole stock market history. That means that 78% of the time, stocks are either flat or going up in value. However, bear markets can instill fear in even the most experienced investors and traders. And for that reason, they can present tremendous opportunities if you can keep a clear head and make intelligent investing decisions. Here are some of the important tips that will help you decide what, if anything, you should be doing right now during this bear market. First, if you already own stocks, if they are not in very profitable companies, if they're highly speculative companies, you might consider getting rid of them. Now those stocks may have already declined 70, 80, or even 90%. So if that's your current situation, you'll just have to decide if you're okay losing the rest of that investment if that were to happen. I mean, on the other side of that coin, you've lost so much already, they need to decide if it's worth it to just hold on to see if those stocks rebound while also considering the possibility that they might end up going to zero. However, if you still have a good bit of money tied up in speculative, non-profitable companies, then you might consider cashing out of them, taking a loss, which will actually give you a tax write-off, and buy some higher quality companies. On the other hand, if you've been investing in high quality, proven companies, then I strongly encourage you, unless you need the capital soon, I encourage you to fight the urge to liquidate your portfolio. In fact, I actually encourage you to do quite the opposite. All the wealthy people I know, instead of liquidating their portfolios in a bear market, they add aggressively to them. But as they're investing, they're investing defensively. They do that by investing in proven companies and in ETFs or funds that perform well during market downturns. In fact, before this bear market really set in, once a month, we were taking about 10% of our cash flow that we received from trading options and buying stock outright with it. However, over the recent months, we've really stepped up the amount that we're purchasing. Instead of just investing once a month and buying stocks outright, we're doing that on almost a weekly basis. And as a result, we've been able to pick up some of our favorite companies at great discounts to what they were trading for earlier this year. For example, we picked up Home Depot this month at a 31% discount to what investors were paying for it just 10 months ago. And Starbucks is another company we've been buying because it was trading at a 42% discount. And if you didn't want to pick individual stocks, you might consider investing in some ETFs. I made a video about four of my favorite ETFs, each with different strengths that you can check out once this video is finished. I'll put the link to the video down in the description below. So instead of a bear market being something that we're afraid or fearful of, bear markets in our eyes, they're actually opportunities. They are the opportunities that we've been waiting for. Opportunities to buy companies that we've been unable to purchase because their prices have been way too high. 
In just a moment, I'm going to share with you a company that we've been buying aggressively over the past few months. But if you want to become a more profitable stock and option trader, please hit the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell notification. And if you're finding benefit or value in this video, please hit the like button as well. Over the past couple months, one of the companies we've been buying, they actually own hospitals. This company is called Medical Properties, and the ticker symbol is MPW. Now, this is not a recommendation to buy this company. I'm simply sharing with you what I've been doing. But in my opinion, hospitals are about as defensive as it gets. Now, I pulled the Medical Properties Summary page up here on Seeking Alpha, which, by the way, Seeking Alpha is a great website for doing research on companies that you might be interested in. And right now, they're offering my viewers a 58% discount for a one-year membership. So if you'd like to check it out, I'll put that discounted affiliate link down in the description below. Here you see that medical properties is down over 46% this year. There's been some fear and talk about one of its tenants having a hard time. There's also been talk about the amount of debt that medical properties is carrying. But if they went through the virus crisis when hospitals really got shut down and they were hurt, now that we're coming out of this crisis, is it really that bad of a time to invest in them? Now don't misunderstand what I'm saying here. Anything can happen. And that's why this position is a small piece of our overall portfolio. But in my opinion, this is an investing opportunity based on all the information that's available to me about the company. In the red box, notice that it's paying a 10.5% dividend yield. Now seeking alpha authors, Wall Street, and even the quant system, it rates it either a buy or a hold. And part of the reason the stock is so beaten down is that as you can see in the red box, short interest makes up over 11% of the outstanding shares. Now, if you'd like to read up on what some of the most experienced traders and authors on Seeking Alpha think about medical properties, here's a list of their articles as well as the author's rating of the stock. But as I mentioned, just because it looks like a great company and a bargain, it doesn't mean that you want to put a huge chunk of your capital into that one company. You really want to spread your investment dollars around. You see, anything can happen. There may end up being a huge debt problem with medical properties or one of its tenants, and the stock might just go bankrupt. But for us, that wouldn't be a big deal. Here you see that in our outright stock ownership account, in which we take at least 10% of our monthly option trading cash flow and buy stocks outright with it, medical properties only makes up 0.61% of our overall portfolio. That portfolio now has about 89 positions in it. If one, two, or even five of those positions went bad, it wouldn't hurt us too much. So I really encourage you to spread your money around if you're going to invest not only in a bear market, but really in any market environment. Most of the stocks that we own are dividend stocks, although we do buy some that don't pay a dividend. But we like owning those dividend stocks because we get paid while the market goes up, goes down, or even goes sideways. And every month, as you can see here, as we add to our dividend stock portfolio, and as our dividend stocks raise their dividends, our paychecks just keep going up. So it doesn't bother us that the overall market is going down because our dividends, well, they just keep going up. I mean, think about it. When was the last time that you drove by or walked into a Starbucks and there was nobody in the store? Or when was the last time that you walked into a Home Depot and the store was empty, there was nobody shopping? When was the last time that you went to the hospital and there were no patients in the bed? It's actually quite the opposite. These companies are all printing a lot of money. Now, could their income go down in a recession and get hurt? Well, sure it could. But would they go out of business? Well, most likely not. In fact, I expect that most or all the companies that we invest in will continue to actually increase our dividends even during a recession. Bear markets can be a great opportunity to buy companies that are long-term winners at a discount. I encourage you, if you're going to buy stocks in a bear market, don't look at it as a short-term play. You want to look at it from a long-term perspective. You can pick up a lot of strong, profitable companies at bargain prices during a bear market or during a recession. But it might mean that prices they might continue to go down below what you actually paid for it, and that's all right. When you think about it, what does it matter if a stock goes down another 5, 10, or even 20% from what you paid for it if you're going to hold it for the long term? Now, don't misunderstand me. We want to buy at the lowest price possible, but we also don't want to miss out on an opportunity because we're hoping that the prices will go lower. Consider doing what we've been doing and buy your favorite companies that are beaten down on a regular basis. Once you've made the decision to buy and hold great, solid, strong companies, then stick with them if nothing fundamentally changes with the companies. It's very important to remember that the problems that we're facing today with Russia, Ukraine, China, inflation, recessions, and bear markets, those things, they won't last forever. And strong companies have what it takes to make it through those difficult market environments. History has proven to us the stock market has always recovered from its market downturns and from its crashes. And we've seen that economic times of weakness, they're followed by periods of growth. I know some of you are thinking, well, I'll just wait until the market bottoms. The challenge is that even for professionals like us, it can be very difficult to pick the very bottom. 
And to be frank with you, I believe it's almost impossible to pick a bottom. But what we do know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that when markets are going down and they're in bear market territory, there are great opportunities that we want to take advantage of. So if you have some extra cash laying around that you won't be needing, why don't you take advantage of this bear market to buy some high quality companies with the plan to hold them for the long term. Don't put your money in risky investments like crypto, or if you do, just put a small amount in a risky investment like that. And if the companies you buy continue to drop in price, as long as they're not a huge portion of your portfolio, if nothing has changed with the company fundamentally, you might consider adding to those positions. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we do trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see four of my favorite ETFs that you can buy during this bear market, or really any market, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, The Top 4 ETFs for No Stress Investing. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.